Ducati Motorcycles, the name alone evokes strong feelings in motorcyclists all over the world. Ducati is known for their race bikes, high-performance engines with notoriously difficult to adjust valves, class-defining monster naked bike, and more recently for its ultra-high-tech touring-slash-adventure bikes and line of scrambler motorcycles. Most people think of Ducati as an Italian brand with a history dating back to the 1920s, but today Ducati is owned by Volkswagen Group by Lamborghini and Audi. Volkswagen, of course, has been making a strong push into the electric vehicle market across many of its brands, including Audi, VW, Porsche, and Skoda. So it shouldn't have been a surprise when, in 2019, Ducati revealed that it was planning on bringing an electric motorcycle to market, saying at that time that such a variant wasn't far from beginning series production. Two years later, however, and the brand is telling a bit of a different story. In an interview with Motorcycle News, Ducati VP of Sales, Francesco Melissia, affirmed that the brand is, quote, thinking and working on electric, and that electrification could be a good opportunity for the brand. But if you're hoping to swing your leg over an electric Ducati anytime soon, you're in for some disappointment. Melissa stated in the interview that Ducati will not be producing an electric model anytime soon. He listed several obstacles to a successful electric bike, including range, weight, and quote, pleasure. Instead, he said that Ducati is investigating the use of e-fuels, which we'll get to in just a minute. First, however, let's talk about the electric motorcycle market as it stands right now. Today, you can walk into a dealership or navigate to a dealer website and buy electric motorbikes covering a wide range of desired uses, from electric scooters to dirt bikes, naked bikes, race bikes, and touring bikes, though the cruiser market is still pretty much internal combustion only. Some of those bikes come from EV-specific manufacturers, such as Zero Motorcycles or Energica Motor Company, but mainstream motorcycle manufacturers are getting in the game too, with Harley-Davidson's Livewire, or upcoming models from motorcycle titans Honda and Kawasaki. But what pretty much all electric bikes have in common is that they're more expensive than their internal combustion counterparts, as well as heavier. And while they may have the same range on a charge as you'd get from a tank of petrol, they aren't as quick to refuel. And for the adventure market, not being able to bring extra fuel with you is a notable disadvantage that hasn't been well solved for. We saw that to some extent on Apple TV's Long Way Up, in which Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman traveled throughout South and Central America on modified Harley-Davidson Livewire prototypes, but not without some considerable challenges. It's also important to note that one of the big drivers of electrification in the automotive sector has been the adoption of stricter emission standards, especially in Europe. In motorbikes too, those standards are forcing manufacturers to produce cleaner and more efficient bikes. However, unlike with cars, many motorcycle emissions controls with their perceived negative impact on performance are bypassed by owners who quickly rip off their bike's exhaust and catalytic converters for much dirtier and louder aftermarket options. This means that manufacturers may not have as much pressure to go electric as automakers. People understand that a bike might be compromised by its emission controls, but they buy it anyway, building the cost of bypassing those controls right into their purchasing budget. None of this should be taken to mean that electric motorcycles aren't awesome, because they absolutely are. EV motorcycles have the same advantages as their automotive counterparts, with incredible torque, smooth power delivery, no shifting, and a quiet ride. Unfortunately, for some motorcycle riders, that description writes out everything they love about their bikes. There's a segment of the motorcycle community that loves the heavy rumble of an engine, the feeling of shifting through the gears, and the roar of loud pipes. Linus from Linus Tech Tips, himself an EV driver, related on his Friday news show that he visited a dealership to buy a Zero SRS electric motorcycle, but ended up finding that without the noise and feel of a petrol bike, the fun factor just wasn't there for him, so he stuck with his old internal combustion motorcycle. Side note. I'm not going to get into the whole loud pipe saves lives thing here, except to say that my internal combustion motorcycles have pretty quiet exhausts, and that the most important piece of safety equipment a rider has is between their ears, with attentive and defensive riding being worth, in my mind, far more than the loudest pipes out there. All of us bikers at Transport Evolved are also pretty strict all the gear, all the time kind of people for what that's worth. If you want a deeper dive in the topic of loud motorcycles and safety, Ryan F9 did a great video on the subject that I'll link to in the description. So with Ducati saying electric model is nowhere in sight, let's talk for a moment about this green alternative mentioned in the interview, synthetic fuels, also sometimes called e-fuel or electric fuel. E-fuel is something that Porsche, owned by Volkswagen Group, same as Ducati, has been experimenting with. Put simply, e-fuel is made by using electricity, hopefully for a renewable source, 
to separate hydrogen from oxygen in water. That hydrogen is then combined with carbon dioxide, either from the air or from captured emissions such as from power plants, creating an artificial methanol. That methanol, through some secret and proprietary process, gets converted into a gasoline that can be burned in internal combustion engines. The idea that Porsche is presenting is that done right, e-fuel would be carbon neutral, the carbon given off by its combustion having been extracted from the air to begin with, assuming the process of creation was done in a carbon neutral way. That's an awfully big claim, and personally, I'll need to see good and independent studies on the subject before I'm willing to accept that these fuels can deliver on what's being promised. Don't forget, there was a time when bioethanol was presented as being a solution to the problem of CO2 emissions from car tailpipes, a claim it never came close to living up to. So then, what are we to read into the revelation that Ducati is backing off from its promise of bringing an electric motorcycle into production in the near future? First and foremost, it sucks. I think the advantages of an electric drivetrain would suit Ducati well, and given the brand's standing in the industry, it would be a big push to other manufacturers' electrification timelines. Speaking of timeline, at this point, an electric Ducati seems, to me, to be an inevitability. Not only because it's part of Volkswagen Group, but also because that's the direction things are going, albeit much more slowly in motorcycles than in cars and trucks. But I also get it. I love motorcycles, and I love EVs, but right now, I don't own an electric motorcycle. In my case, that's about two things, cost and weight. I buy my motorcycles used, very used in fact, and the earliest Zero models are just now getting into my price range. I hope to have one someday soon. And as someone with a damaged neck, being able to pick up my bike is always a big concern. Electric motorcycles are heavy, just like how my husband's Tesla Model 3 weighs about the same as some models of the Ford F-150 pickup truck. When our own Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, who's no stranger to motorcycles, rode the Energica SS9, she dropped it because she wasn't ready for the huge weight given its size. Do I think e-fuels are the solution? Not really. I'd love to be wrong because getting electric cars and motorcycles into everyone's hands quickly isn't that feasible. If they work out, e-fuels could be a low carbon or carbon neutral bridge to an electrified future, but I don't think we'll ever see mass adoption of the technology. Frankly, if it was all that feasible to use renewables to extract hydrogen from water, fuel cell technology would be a lot farther along its adoption than it is. If I was to guess, I'd say that we'll see e-fuels become common for wealthy people who want to keep their internal combustion sports cars and classic cars, and maybe motorcycles, on the road long after strict emissions regulations would otherwise have them relegated to being garage queens. So if Ducati will eventually put out an EV motorcycle, why pull back on their stated plans? I think they're waiting to see, first off, what breakthroughs in battery and charging tech might be around the corner. And second off, what sells in electric motorcycles so they can better plan their entry into the market. With so many other larger motorcycle manufacturers getting their electric models in the near future, Ducati may be content to follow where the big boys lead rather than chart their own course and risk going in the wrong direction. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Raging Fellows, Gordon C., Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, Anonymous Freak, and Tesla Nagong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month patron supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, J.P. Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of our wonderful supporters, you can find links below to our Patreon, Bitcoin, and Ko-fi. You can also chat with the team and transport all fans over at our Discord. And if you'd like to buy some TE swag, just head over to our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!